In this video, we will explore how we approach trigonometric integrals. We will do three videos. The first considers how we integrate odd powers of sine and or cosine. Trigonometric integrals are integrals involving trigonometric functions. They occur on their own as something to be evaluated, or they might occur as a result of trigonometric substitutions when evaluating other integrals. Here are some sample trigonometric integrals. You notice that some involve cosine and sine, others involve um, secant and tangent, and we're going to explore how we solve them based on the powers of the trigonometric functions. In these next few videos, we'll explore general techniques to apply and how to evaluate these specific integrals. When evaluating trigonometric integrals, it's very important to apply the basic trig identities and double angle and half angle formulas. For example, we'll consider the very basic uh, Pythagorean identity, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. And you could easily solve this for either cosine squared theta or sine squared theta. We could also take this original identity and multiply both sides by a squared and have another uh, easily ap applicable identity. If I have this basic Pythagorean identity and divide both sides by cosine squared theta, I get this additional identity, one plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta, or solving for tangent squared theta, we get secant squared theta minus one. You are expected to know and be able to apply these identities. In addition to these identities, it's important to know the double and half angle formulas. So you'll recall from trigonometry that the sine of two theta is equal to two times the sine of theta times co cosine of theta. We won't use this one quite as often as we will use the double angle formula for cosine. And we usually see the double angle formula for cosine in one of three forms. The cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Or if we use our basic Pythagorean identity, we can replace sine squared theta with one minus cosine squared theta, and we get that cosine of two theta is equal to two cosine squared theta minus one, or in cosine two theta equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, if we make a substitution for cosine squared theta to be one minus sine squared theta, we get the cosine of two theta is one minus two sine squared theta. We'll take these two formulas for the cosine of two theta. We'll solve this first one for cosine squared theta. We'll solve the second one for sine squared theta, and we will get the half angle formulas. Cosine squared theta equals one plus the cosine of two theta divided by two, and sine squared theta equals one minus the cosine two theta divided by two. You are expected to know these trigonometric identities and formulas. They make it possible to evaluate many of the trigonometric integrals. If we consider integrals that take the form, this integral of the mth power of sine of ax times the nth power of cosine of ax dx, where m and n are non-negative integers, we usually consider two different forms. The first form is that when at least one of m or n is an odd number. And the second is that both m and n are even numbers. And we'll explore this second case in, in our second video on trigonometric integrals. So we're gonna consider this first case, when one of at least m or n is an odd number. The general steps we follow in this case are that first, for the trigonometric function raised to the odd power, we separate one factor of that trigonometric function and move it to the back of the integral. For example, suppose I have the integral of the sixth power of cosine of theta times the fifth power of sine of theta d theta. We notice that sine of theta is raised to the fifth power, which is an odd number. So according to this step, I'm going to separate one factor of sine of theta and move that factor to the end to the rear of the integral. The next step we apply is that we use our Pythagorean identity to change the remaining powers of that trigonometric function, the one that had originally had the odd power, and we, we change them to the other trigonometric function. So we change our integral of cosine theta to the sixth power times sine of theta to the fourth power times sine of theta d theta to be cosine theta to the sixth power times one minus cosine squared theta squared 
times sine of theta d theta. After that, we proceed with u substitution where u is equal to the other trig function. In this case, our u would be our cosine of theta. So then negative du will be the sine of theta d theta, which we conveniently see here at the rear of the integral. So let's proceed with those steps. So again, sine of theta is to the fifth power, so we separate one factor of sine of theta and move that to the back of the integral. We change sine of theta to the fourth power to be one minus cosine squared theta quantity squared in the integral. And now we proceed with letting u equals the cosine of theta and du is equal to the negative sine of theta d theta. And making the substitution, we now have the integral of u to the sixth times one minus u squared quantity squared negative du. I now will perform some elementary algebra to expand the integrand. And you can see I pull that negative out in front distribute u to the 6 through. I can easily integrate that and then I perform the back substitution so that the integral of cosine theta to the 6th power times sine of theta to the 5th power d theta becomes negative cosine theta to the 7th power over 7 plus 2 times cosine theta to the 9th power over 9 minus cosine theta to the 11th power over 11 plus our constant. And it's worthwhile to check the answer by differentiating the antiderivative. You might need to apply some trig identities and see that you can get back to the original integrand. In general, here are some things that you should know about trigonometric integrals. To successfully evaluate them, you should be fluent with the trigonometric identities. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, and 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. You should also know the double and half angle formulas. You should also know the rules for working with the powers of the trig functions in the trig integrals. These rules stem from the use of u substitution where the u is assigned to be one of the trig functions. You want to watch for pairings of the trig functions and their derivatives. So in this particular video we looked at what happens when we have at least one odd power of either sine or cosine when working with an integral involving both. And finally, practice. Efficiency in recognizing which steps to take really comes with practicing a variety of problems by hand.